Brothers and sisters in Islam, you know you and I, we will be tested. This is a universal law of the life of this world. But you and I also know brothers and sisters in Islam as Muslims, that sometimes losses are actually gains. And sometimes being broken is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raising us up and strengthening us. Because this is the way of the sunnah. For our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kana yuhibbu al Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to love positivity and being positive. On the other hand, we have shaytan. And he's the total opposite. He doesn't love progress. He doesn't love positivity. He specializes in breeding sadness within the hearts and souls of the believers. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. He doesn't want us to see the cup as half full or light at the end of the tunnel. He only wants us to see doom and gloom. He loves for us to see our masajid closed as us having lost the rewards of standing the nights of Ramadan. He wants us to see our masajid closed as us having lost the rewards of standing the night of Laylatul Qadr, the night of power and decree and virtue. He wants us to see us in isolation as us having lost the rewards of Eid. Indeed, he's an enemy and Allah commands us to take him as an enemy. You know what, brothers and sisters in Islam, you and I, especially in this age, as we edge closer to the day of Qiyamah, and with regards to our religion, we're always made to feel like the walls are closing in. We need to train ourselves constantly that, you know what? Whatever Allah does, Allah only does good. The full picture is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reality of Allah's plan with us is with Him. We only have pixels, pixels that the days and nights of this life give us. And we know very well, we can never understand the entire picture by just looking at pixels. We have to remain patient and gather pixels and gather pixels and gather pixels and remain upon obedience, remain upon that which pleases Allah whilst we do trusting the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowing whatever Allah does, He does good. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu subhanallah when he accepted Islam how amazing was his Islam he did hajj with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he fell extremely ill after his hajj subhanallah he felt resigned to death that this is my illness of death he begins distributing matters pertaining to uh, or, or sorting out the affairs of his inheritance. And the Prophet wasallam comes to visit him and sees him busy with this. He had one daughter and he was arranging what she would get after he passes away and what to do with the rest of his wealth. Subhanallah, this is how, he re how resigned he was to him passing away. And guess what? He lived for 45 years after that. And Allah blessed him with 29 children. Brothers and sisters in Islam, from a Muslim's perspective, there's a silver lining in every cloud. That is the hard reality. You know, when the Kaaba was protected, subhanAllah, because of the coronavirus and it was blocked off, people asked, you know, what positive idea can you use to explain what's happening in Mecca? And one of my students answered it beautifully. And I actually wrote it in a tweet and it went viral. That subhanAllah, the world can now see how we worship one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We never worshipped the Kaaba in Mecca. The Kaaba in Mecca was only a direction that we faced when we worship one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, our salah is happening five times a day, every day, despite the protection that is being afforded to the Kaaba. There's always a silver lining. And I can tell you because of this answer, because of this attitude, because of looking at things with the cup half full, many people started reading about Islam and some of them even accepted Islam. La ilaha illallah. You know, I speak to people, brothers and sisters in Islam, and this is the essence of the video today. So please pay attention. This is important. I speak to them about Ramadan, the greatest month of the year. It's about to knock our doors, a guest that visits us yearly. And subhanallah, I sense that the true excitement that I witness in people every year is just not there this year because of the coronavirus because of the masajid being closed. It's as if they've become victims to the whispers of shaitan that with our masajid closed, we've lost our Ramadan or because without our masajid, we can't have a Ramadan. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we have to see the silver lining. And you know where the silver lining is in? It's in our realization of how merciful Allah is and how merciful 
the Sharia is, how merciful Islam is, how merciful the actions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa la ilaha illallah. Because of the situation that we are in, we are forced to think about Allah and His Rasul and the Sharia in a way that we probably, most probably, wouldn't have thought about things this way if we weren't in this situation. Think about it, brothers and sisters in Islam. Did Allah make salah in the masjid behind the imam a condition for our forgiveness in Ramadan? A condition for us achieving the rewards of Laylatul Qadr? A condition for us being freed from the hellfire? Absolutely not. Isn't this a mercy? In fact, do you know that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'in, they prayed taraweeh in their homes by themselves and with their families? They only prayed two or three days with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in congregation, subhanallah. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam noticed them gathering, so he didn't come out. He stayed in his home. And the next day he told them, I saw what you did, subhanallah. It was a beautiful thing, but I feared that Allah will make it compulsory upon us. So I stayed in my home and prayed by myself. How merciful is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? That subhanallah, we can understand his action then even better now. For imagine if it did become a condition and it did become compulsory, what would we do now with our masajid closed? Now obviously there would be solutions because the sharia always has a solution. But understand brothers and sisters in Islam, subhanallah, you can pray tarawih in your home by yourself and experience the Ramadan that the sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'in experienced without feeling the guilt that you're not in jama'ah because in, in the, at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and with the best generation of Islam, that's how they prayed taraweeh. You might say, I haven't memorized the Quran. Well, how many Sahaba did memorize the entire Quran? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and this is a mercy from him, فَقْرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ Recite that, which is easy for you to recite. Subhanallah. Even if you only know, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ وَحَدْ Repeat it once. 10 times, 20 times, 30 times. If you feel comfortable that now you've, you've achieved what you wanted to achieve from your unit while standing, your unit of prayer while standing, then go into ruku', then go into sujood, then come back up. And if it's still qul huwa Allah ahad, alhamdulillah, repeat it time and time again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it easy upon us. And this way you can achieve the rewards of Ramadan, achieve the rewards of Laylatul Qadr, achieve the rewards of Eid, subhanallah. And then also, look at the mercy of Islam. We have the teaching of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that if we used to be uh, commonly associated with an act, and a time comes where we are prevented from that act, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards us the rewards of having done that act, even though we haven't lifted a finger. La ilaha illallah. The message, brothers and sisters in Islam, don't be sad, smile, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more as we realize how merciful He is. Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more for the merciful sharia. Praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more for a merciful messenger, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this Ramadan, let us celebrate us being believers, celebrate the mercy of the sharia, celebrate the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a way we couldn't have celebrated these matters in that way if we were in normal circumstances. This is what I want us to do, brothers and sisters in Islam. Immediately, now and now. I want us to get rid of the negativity that shaitan has been feeding into our hearts and our souls and bring in the necessary positivity from the Quran, from the Sunnah, from our knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His names and attributes. Yes, no doubt, this Ramadan is going to be different. It will be a Ramadan outside of the masjid. It will be a Ramadan without the community. But alhamdulillah, our opportunities for greatness are intact, are still the same. Our chances to be forgiven from standing the nights of Ramadan still exist. Our chances of achieving the rewards of Laylatul Qadr still exist. Our chances of being freed from the hellfire still exist. Bring in the positivity and go through this Ramadan having good thoughts in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that inshallah we will get to the end of Ramadan having achieved all of the rewards of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah. Let us go through this Ramadan never ever forgetting that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards us for actions that we would have done if we couldn't do them because we were, pre we were prevented from doing so. Subhanallah. This is the emotion that we should have. We need to bring it together and give Ramadan the excitement that it deserves. I love you all for the sake of Allah, my brothers and sisters in Islam. And I look forward to seeing you at the other end, holding the rewards of Ramadan, inshaAllah.
آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته